Warning, this video contains inaccurate historical art interpretations, really shitty memes, and blasphemy. What's up, gamer boys? So recently, I have been re-watching a ton of Juice Man videos, and I thought I could provide a similar service for my community. Thanks to modern photography and printing methods, prints of masterpieces have become more available than ever. But with Pride Month either fast approaching or already here, I want to make sure that none of my viewers are caught illegally hanging up straight iconography. And that's why I'm here to rank some of history's greatest artworks from straightest to gayest, using nothing but my dumb opinions. Now, I think it's important to clarify that I am ranking the artworks, not the artists themselves. Because for one, it's just funnier and way less weird than ranking actual people. And two, because for some of them, no matter how much contextual evidence we have, we could never say for sure. Just because the society that they lived in made it straight up illegal to top, bottom, or breed your fellow man. And so instead of using that to wildly guess at how much each of these historical figures loved or didn't love the bussy, I am instead going to judge how homo or heteroerotic their artwork is. So, with that said, if you want to avoid accidentally enjoying heteroerotic art this month, you've come to the right place. Anyways, that's possibly the dumbest intro I've ever recorded, but let's begin. Starting with the works made by a guy with 14 kids by 14 different women, I'm just gonna throw in basically everything made by Gustav Klimt. The man was a recluse who lived in his mom's basement, refused to ever wear clothes, yet somehow managed to start a whole artistic revolution in his own country over the different ways he wanted to paint naked women. Of course, you might say that plenty of artists broke the same kind of rules he did, given that those rules were really fucking stupid, like women not being allowed to have their mouths open in paintings or some shit. But the thing is, none of them were nearly as dedicated as Klimt was to his work. He built his entire career on painting sexy women or some shit like that. He was so dedicated to this career path that he ended up having 14 different babies as a byproduct of his research. And that shit is just a whole other level of being ungovernably straight. And his paintings reflect that. So even though his artwork is undeniably based, I'm afraid to say that for this month, they are conclusively illegally straight. Uh, unless you're a woman, then it's okay, I guess. The next straightest work on this list is by an artist far less based than our boy Klimt. Le Demoiselle d'Avignon by the misogyny Moses himself Pablo Picasso. Honestly, it was a hard decision between this and Klimt's work because their body of work is just about as straight as each other's. But luckily for my lazy ass, he did make some confusing comments about how all artists are women and therefore gay artists can't be real artists because they're actually straight and therefore straights are normies. I, I don't fucking know. But regardless of his comments or even him as a person, his art is very straight. The Demoiselle is famous for being the first Cubist painting. A and what can I say? There's a long held tradition of men misrepresenting women's anatomy to better suit male preferences. Yet somehow, Picasso was still able to revolutionize this concept by being the first to entirely disregard the spine just so that butts and titties can be shown at the same time. His bravery showed the world that women's anatomy can be ignored on purpose and straight men will still like it. Truly, Picasso walked so that manga and comic book artists could run. But bad woman's anatomy is straight. The final work in the straight tier is Francisco Goya's Naked Maya. This might not be the first painting that comes to mind when you hear the name Goya, because his black paintings are so much more famous. But before he started painting haunting scenes of war and death in secret, he was already secretly painting titties. <laughs> because at the time this was done, this would have been literally illegally straight. There are plenty of other works with similar compositions and the same amount of nudity. Some I even actually consider to be better painted. Some were even the cause of scandals like Manet's Olympia. But unlike others that defied societal expectations, this one straight up defied the fucking Spanish Inquisition. And risking excommunication, banishment, and possibly death from your home country just to paint a naked picture for your prime minister? Th that's, that's fucking crazy. 
I, I think the Prime Minister even got tried over this. So I'm definitely putting this one on this tier because at one point it literally was. Going up a tier, Johannes Vermeer's tragedy of fantasy, The Milkmaid, isn't quite as illegally straight as the others before it. But hanging this one up on your wall will still cause suspicion. Obviously, it doesn't look like much right now, but imagine for a second that you were a Dutch Protestant man in the 1600s. Now after cleaning up the vomit caused by that thought, I'm sure you can see why this painting should be observed and interpreted with the male gaze in mind. The image of a working class woman was already viewed as a subject of desire by the standards of the time, but Vermeer took it a step further by depicting her with sleeves rolled up past her tan lines, and with a foot warmer with the cupid painted on the tiles either side of it. So even though this painting wasn't really controversially straight like the others below on the list, I think it gets a spot for very effectively depicting the changes in societal norms over time. Sharing this tier with Vermeer is the Renaissance masterpiece by Raphael, The School of Athens. Now, you might be looking at this and question how a bunch of Greek philosophers in a room together is straight, but you have to understand the context. Raphael is probably best known in the history of art for his natural ability to absorb and adapt the styles of other artists. And possibly the biggest stylistic influence on him at the time was the work of none other than Michelangelo. And uh, you, you see, Michelangelo's art was really fucking gay. The fact that any man could take Michelangelo's understanding of male anatomy and homoerotic poses and make it not that gay, that automatically makes him straight. In the very middle tier, I am starting with Jackson Pollock's drip paintings. Now, this is an artist whose work is often described as uniquely masculine. And as such, some of you may question why I have placed it here. But the thing is, Gay people are masculine too, and probably more importantly, splattering around and dripping thick fluids is a sexual orientation neutral hobby. Pretending otherwise is top erasure, and as such the drip paintings by Pollock are by. Vincent van Gogh, like Oweeboos, had a difficult relationship with women. <laughs> he had one relationship that sadly broke down, due to his father's disapproval of sex workers and their combined financial troubles. But aside from that relationship, he also fell in love with two different cousins and was promptly rejected by both. Because of that, I have placed the three versions of his three bedroom paintings here. In these, we see Van Gogh's decision to set up his room with a single bed, portraying his melancholic attitudes towards love in his later life. So um, I I'm really just trying to represent all you single people here. Um, in conclusion, if you've got this one in your house, it's it's because you get no bitches. <laughs> gay or straight. Starting off the gay tier, we have Georgia O'Keeffe's flower paintings. Now, these are often interpreted with themes of sexuality, feminism, and even queerness thanks to her husband. And even though she repeatedly says that's not the case, I skim through Death of the Author like once and I, I don't fucking know man, I, I need to pad out this tier. Next up, somewhat related to O'Keefe, we have The Borderline by Frida Kahlo. This is an artist who was likely bi and also likely in a flirtatious relationship with O'Keefe. I singled out this painting because it depicts a flower not native to Mexico on the Mexican side of the border. A flower that O'Keefe created a whole series on so even though it is less overt when compared with the rest of this tier list, I think putting a little easter egg to flirt with your fellow artists is very cute. So <laughs> it's my list and so I'm including it. Now, no list of artworks or artists would really feel complete without including Leonardo da Vinci or his masterpiece The Mona Lisa. I think it is a pretty accepted theory that Leonardo was gay but his paintings aren't that sussy, you know? <laughs> now, I can probably point out that the platonic beauty that makes the Mona Lisa so interesting is only achievable because it was painted with minimal sexualizing male gaze, but instead I think it's just easier to point out that 
it spent its life in the palaces of French kings and in the bedroom of a French emperor. <laughs> Finally, we're down to our last two, and I'm going to be a little controversial and place Michelangelo's Last Judgment second, but l let me cook, alright? L let me cook. If it wasn't because of number one, which by the way only beat this one by a fraction of a percentage, if it wasn't for number one, The Last Judgment would easily be the gayest painting ever conceived. Just, just look at the thing, man. People often point to Da Vinci as a stereotypical renaissance man, but Michelangelo is no slouch either. I mean, the man is a master sculptor, painter, while also being an amazing baker and a cake decorator at the same time. There is just no need for any of these people to be this caked up, but he decided to bake each bun to be more breathable than the last anyways. Even the women in his paintings are painted with the body type of his ideal man. That's not me saying muscular women don't exist, by the way. I'm not trying to say that straight male artists wouldn't paint muscular women. But the way he attaches their breasts to their chest suggests to me that this was painted by a man who doesn't look at naked women very often, nor would ever want to. And that's not even the best part. Remember during the corona pandemic when you would occasionally see funny compilations of Zoom meetings being Zoom bombed by straight and gay porn alike? I believe even the Italian Senate fell victim to one? Well, Michelangelo straight up painted this homoerotic masterpiece directly on the outer wall of the Pope's house, and he got paid for it. Yes, the prudes decided that it was a little too sussy and hired someone to paint some cringe clothing over it, but at the end of the day, it's still there. Even to this day, loudly claps the cheeks that bears the crown. Or at least that's what I would be saying if it wasn't for number one. At number one, the gayest masterpiece to have ever graced the mortal realms is, in my opinion, The Taking of Christ by Marco Angelo Marisi da Caravaggio. Now, I know all of you are probably looking at this and thinking, how can this be gayer than that? But as I said, let me cook. To truly understand this painting, you have to understand the story it is trying to portray. The Taking of Christ is a religious history painting detailing the biblical story of the kiss that betrayed Jesus. Now, I know there are already plenty of memes where this scene is the butt of the joke, but you have to understand that in Caravaggio's painting, the soldiers clearly already know by this point which one is Jesus. Yet Judas is still going in for another very sloppy kiss. So aggressively, in fact, that it takes three fully armored soldiers to wrestle him away. Now, painting a homoerotic scene of a biblical story involving Jesus as one of the main characters would have already made this a very gay painting. But to claim the top spot, Caravaggio has gone ahead and painted in a self-insert, whose only role in the story is to say, I'll watch. I know there's a much better interpretation where his character is the one holding up the light as a reference to the fact that it's an artist's role to illuminate such stories to the general public. But ignoring that for a second so I can put Caravaggio up top, it doesn't really get much gayer than painting a biblical fanfiction where your self-insert is the one voyeuristically watching Jesus making out with another man. This is way before the Mormons ever wrote their own self-insert Bible fanfics, by the way. The man was just way too far ahead of his time. You can blame it on my Caravaggio bias, but to me, that makes the taking of Christ just slightly gayer than The Last Judgment, crowning it as the gayest and therefore one of the greatest paintings in art history. <laughs> that, that's the fucking video. Did I miss anything? Please let me know in the comments, and if you liked it, feel free to like, subscribe, and join me on Discord. Anyways, uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you.